Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Beast. peek -a I see you because... Ah! Can't we have nice things? Now I have to lean down here on camera and... Woo! Woo! Ow! I'm so far out. Oh my god! This is where real professional YouTubers, you'd see all these jump cuts in there. <laughs> God damn it, that hurts so bad fan, bad fan. Please. Okay, let's try all that again. Hey, you guys, it's Peter in the back. Of course, it's back. I'm not going anywhere. Please. <laughs> Peekaboo, I see you because I caught it that time. I'm YouTube famous now. Available Christmas 2025 or whatever the hell you celebrate. The album, Dad. Shh, shh. AF. I'm trying to think of the perfect Christmas song, but my eye hurts so bad. Oh my God. I think I cut my eyes, my eye bleeding. I'm gonna sit through this whole video, okay? It's like when I wore that powdered donut lip gloss, I didn't even know it, the lip balm. The whole time through the video, it's like I'm gonna, my eyes gonna be bleeding down the side of my face, and I'm not even gonna know it. Then people are gonna be like, Peter, you got a fleck of s s s linen or something. <laughs> linen. <laughs> oh my god, I have filmed so many videos, okay? I have filmed like five, it's Wednesday, I'm pre filming this video. I filmed like Five videos for today, five videos for tomorrow. I got a vlog still. I'm gonna vlog for tomorrow. So I have been on it, okay? I had Cousin Fun Day today. I came home. I am having so much fun filming these videos. I've been filming one video after another. I just did two TV reviews, uh, two different TV shows. I did a review of the native products over my review channel. I, listen, I did a weight loss journey. I weighed in early, okay? I've been doing it all. I'm like, listen, I'm having so much fun today. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> is my eye bleeding? I'm dreaming of a smoky mouth. <laughs> Woo, we went up octaves. She went up, she do, she do sometimes. Sometimes she thinks she's Mariah Carey. Don't act like you don't think you're Mariah Carey sometimes when you're walking around the house, okay? She's dreaming of a, he do, she do. I'm dreaming of a Smoky Mountain Christmas. <laughs> I'm gonna have everybody singing this song by the end of Christmas. Even if you don't celebrate Christmas, okay? You can take the girl from, it's Dolly Parton. Why you don't like Dolly Parton? You get fucked if you don't like Dolly. If you do not like Dolly Parton, what the fuck is wrong with you? What did she do to you? Dolly Parton didn't do nothing to nobody, okay? She's just dreaming of a Smoky Mountain Christmas. I'm dreaming of a Smoky Mountain Christmas. You can take the girl from the country, I've heard them say, but you cannot take the country from the girl. Beast! My second favorite Christmas movie of life is called Season of Miracles. It's a Hallmark made-for-television movie, okay? And it had, uh, what, Patty Duke Evans in it. Do we just call her, do we call her, is that her name? Patty Duke Evans. Do you know what I'm talking about? Her, her son was in the Goonies. What was her name? Patty Duke Aston. Patty Duke Aston. Sean Aston was in the Goonies. He was also in that movie Taps, I think. Do you remember that? But anyway, she plays an angel. <laughs> she does. And then the neighbors bring the kids cinnamon rolls. And when I used to watch it back in the day, I mean, like when I was 30, I always had to have cinnamon rolls when I watched that show. Do you do that with food? You always have to have certain food? Well, I used to have to always have cinnamon rolls when I watch that movie, A Season of Miracles. Oh my God, those were my two favorite Christmas movies, Season of Miracles. And it's got that Carla, I can't, I never can pronounce her last name, Gugliani or whatever. She's in all those scary movies now on Netflix, okay? Like House on Haunted Hill and House This and, you know, all them scary series. Not movies, but series. And she was in Spy Games. But she got her start, no true story, she did, A Season of Miracles. It's a sad tale. It really is. It's, it should be more of a lifetime. Maybe it was a lifetime. I think it was a Hallmark. But anyway, I have it on VHS down in the basement. No, I do true story. But anyway, um, it's about this woman, okay? And she got of money. She's real poor. She's got a beat up car and stuff like that. And her sister is Laura Dern, who I love so much from Wild at Heart. Did you ever see that movie, Wild at Heart? Oh my God, I love David Lynch movies so much. And it's the part where her and Nicolas Cage are driving down the street. They're going to New Orleans. New Orleans. But anyway, they're driving down there. 
And uh, so they're driving down New Orleans, and uh, she's smoking a cigarette. And he goes, that don't smell like a cool. And she goes, it ain't one of the lessons of life. It's one of my favorite movies, uh, lines from any movies ever. But anyway, so the story is real sad, okay? So Laura Dern, she's like, you know, I relate, because she's a drug addict. And, and I've been sober, okay? My sobriety birthday is December 17th. I got sober in 1994. It's 2024. So if I should make it, we don't borrow time in recovery. But if I should make it to December 17th, Baby, I got 30 years. Can you even believe that? Some of you aren't even 30 years old. I know. Okay, my sister-in-law, Jessie. Hey, sissy. <laughs> sissy. I always wanted to call somebody sissy. Hey, sissy, how are you? My sister-in-law, Jessie, who I adore. I love her so much, okay? Her birthday is my sobriety birthday. Her birthday is December 17th. Okay, of the year before I got sober. So she was one years old when I got sober. <laughs> Ma'am, if that don't pay, put, that'll put you on the map, don't it? That'll get, that'll get you sober real quick. But anyway, so, uh, but I love her so much. I love my sister-in-law, Jessie. Hey, Jessie, how you doing, girl? Anyway, um, what was I saying? Okay, but it's a real sad tale because Laura Dern, she done lost her kids. The foster care system's coming and taking it away. And the foster care, the social worker, you know, the social worker is the woman that got her hair cut in Edward Scissorhands. I don't remember her name. But anyway, she's the one that got her hair cut and uh, she like fell in love with Edward Scissorhands. Do you remember that movie? I actually, I went to junior high with this girl that was in that movie. She was also in Reality Bites. I thought she was so cool. And then she ended up going to boarding school. She became friends with Winona Ryder and that's how she got to be an Edward Scissorhands. She had talking parts and everything. Anybody that I went to junior high with can tell you that. Some of them people are still friends with her today. Okay, I see it on the Facebook. You can find out the truest facts in the world on the Facebooks, but no, true story. I went to a junior high with her. I, I remember everything about her. We used to play tennis together. We were on the same tennis league and everything. But then she went to boarding school. She became friends with Winona Ryder. I think that's how she got in the movies. But she actually has talking lines at Edward Scissorhands. No, true story. If you went to high school with me, you know it's the truth. It's the truth all day long. I won't say her name because she might want to be anonymous today. I think she's doing life, relationship life coaching is what somebody told me today. I said, what happened to that girl that was in Reality Bites at Edward Scissorhands? She's in the part where they say she, they hand her some food and she goes, I don't, I'm, don't eat anything that's touched human hands or something like that. She's like Winona Ryder's best friend in Edward Scissorhands. And anyway, so I said, what happened to that girl? I was talking to one of my friends the other day that, like, it's friends with her. I said, what happened to her? And they go, oh, she don't live in LA anymore. She got divorced and she moved and she lives somewhere else and now she's a life coach or something like that. I was like, all right for her, girl. She started a podcast. They're like, how'd you know? I was like, girl, everybody's got a podcast these days. I'm start thinking about starting four of them next year myself. But anyway, it's a real sad story. See, I always come back. Y'all think I forget things, but I don't. Okay, somebody the other day said, you always say you're going to include pictures and you don't. And I wanted to say, well, baby, you didn't watch my video far enough because you know what? That day, I included the picture. And you sure as shit showed your truth, didn't you? Okay? What you showed was you don't even watch my videos because I did include the picture that day. Maybe not when you wanted it to be. It might have been a, a three minutes later. Okay? I, I, listen, the picture appears when the picture appears. You know the truth. Okay? <laughs> Decipher that. I don't even know what that means. But anyway, Season of Miracles, the Hallmark Christmas movie. It's a real sad tale. Okay? Laura Dern, she is a drug addict. And she's about to lose her kids. To the social worker who is the woman at Edward Scissorhands that was hitting on Edward Scissorhands can cut her hair up and stuff like that. But anyway, she's a social worker. And so Carla Gugliani or whatever her name is from Spy Games and those House on Haunted Hill movies, she's the aunt, okay? And she don't really want to take the kids, but she knows that the kids are going to go in the foster care system and it's Christmas time. So she takes them and they just start driving, okay? Then they show up in this town and they go to this person's house because the angel, Patty Duke Aston, okay? Is that her name, Patty Duke Aston? Sean Aston's mother. Anyway, she uh, is the angel, okay? And so she keeps on trying to fix things for her, but nobody knows that she's an angel. She just disappears after she does her angel things. I wish I had an angel like that just came and fixed my life, you know? Angel, come clean my house. <laughs> Oh my God, I did have a friend of mine named Angel back in the day. What happened to her? No, it wasn't Misty's sister. But I did have a friend of mine named Misty. Oh, I've said that. But anyway. So, anyway... My friend, my cousin Caroline, when she adopted her dog, whose name is now Mabel, its real name was Misty. I thought that was so funny. Like my friend Misty that used to smoke the clove cigarettes and she used to do the in the bathroom, you know, and things like that. Five dollars, two for five. Okay. People think that's a lie. It's a true story. Her name really ain't Misty though. Okay, but I did know a Misty and I put her name on it because it really kind of fit her too. But that girl that I was friends with back in the day, Misty in high school, no, dude, she true story gave two BJs, two for five dollars, and she bought her a pack of clove cigarettes. Okay. At Hardwick's in Broad Ripple. Hardwick's was a cigarette store. True story. And then you know what? She went to Indiana University and she got in that group up with people where they go around the world and they sing. And she met this guy and his parents were real rich. And then she came back and she had found the Lord and stuff like that. So she was a Puritan. 
and shouldn't you found virgin and things like that, you know? They just, that means that you just do it in the butt. <laughs> okay, that's what you mean, you just do it in the butt. And then she was a newfound Christian. Now, okay, she thinks it's so funny. When I tell her I talk about her, video, she's like, mm, she thinks it's so funny. She like, acts like she forgot all about them days and stuff like that, but I haven't, okay? She might be living in a million dollar home and have four kids that are all in college at this time and her and her husband take a lot of trips and she might drive a Range Rover, okay? But I remember those days, and no, her name is not Misty, but I did have a friend named Misty. But I remember those days when Misty was going into the bathroom and she was giving blowjobs, okay? <laughs> One for two dollars or two for five. <laughs> I mean, if you got a friend, why not? So anyway, she got her pack of clothes. That's all that matters. Now she got up with people. She found the Lord, and she's living in a million-dollar house driving a Range Rover. Sounds like the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City to me. I don't hate her for it, okay? What's she bringing for Thanksgiving dinner? Hopefully not a, a, a sweet potatoes with marshmallows, because that's trashy. Anyway, she better have the whole thing catered. Anyway, I'm going to have to reach out to old Misty one of these days. I should just blow her cover and just say what her name is on there. She'd be like, oh my God. She had the funeral vespers and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so Season of Miracles, they end up living in this person's house that's died. And they act like they're the, the niece that's coming there to live in the house. And then the neighbors, they bring over the cinnamon rolls. That's really the only part that you need to know is about the cinnamon rolls. Okay, that's all I care about is the cinnamon rolls. But then she falls in love. It's kind of like a cozy mystery. Anyway, yesterday, which was about two hours ago because I'm pre-filming this video. Today, earlier, I filmed a video which probably has, it's probably sitting at 1.5 thousand views right now. It was a holiday rant video. And I had y'all send me your holiday rants, and then I wanted to respond to them, okay? Because we all hate the holidays. Can we just admit to it? I love the holidays so much. Oh my God, I went to Costco today, and I bought my Christmas wreath and my Christmas pillows. My cousin Caroline, she said, I think you should give me one of those plaid Christmas pillows. I said, Caroline, I'm already sponsoring Thanksgiving. I think that you should have bought your pillows. They were $9.99. She goes, can't I just borrow one for tomorrow for my Adirondack chair on my front porch? I go, borrow a pillow? I go, what are we, in third grade and this is a sleepover? No, they're going to be on my patio. We're changing over from Halloween to Christmas tonight. She goes, please, just let me. She always does this shit to me. She's always like, please, if you really love me. I said, no, you know I really love you, okay? But I am not letting you borrow one of my brand new plaid pillows from Costco. Get fucked. Anyway. If you have never told a family member or have been told by a family member to get fucked, well, Merry Christmas and get fucked. There, you heard it from me, okay? That's where people are like, and he tells people to get fucked. I sure do. I sure do all day long. And I own it. And you know what? Merry Christmas and get fucked. And there you go. Okay. Oh, my God. He's telling more people to get fucked. They can't handle it. They're having the funeral vespers. I'm like, oh, my God. He's telling people to get fucked. Yeah, strap on your depends. Okay, so let's get back into these, these rants from earlier. I didn't even think I was going to have no intro. I thought I was going to get right into these today. This is where people are like, he stretches these videos out. Girl, you sit there and just do the intro that I did, okay? People are like, he scripts these. Script it out. I dare you to script it out and do what I just did for 13 minutes straight. Okay, You cannot do that. You cannot do that, okay? <laughs> it's like a fine wine. <laughs> these people over here, including all these jump cut cuts that make somebody look like they're a robot, they're getting a million views of video. <laughs> Maybe that, there's something to that. I'm getting 1.5. People are probably sick of the stories. But you know what? I love y'all that have stuck around. Thank God for you that have stuck around through the years. What would I do without you, okay? <laughs> okay. And to the one person in the back row that's like, what? He's like the first video that he's ever seen in mine. He's like, this person is on speed. No, I'm not. I've been sober for almost 30 years. But you know what? That's called happy, joyous, and free. Live every day. We are not a glum lot in sobriety. And if you are sober this holiday season, if you are intentionally, <laughs> intentionally sober this holiday season, and you are making it through the holiday God love you. God bless you. Shout out your sobriety in the comment section below. We are not a glum lot, and we should be here to prove to other people that are struggling. Holiday times are some of the hardest times with being around family members. God love them, but we can't fucking stand them, okay? Toxic family members, having to spend a lot of money we ain't got, okay? And showing up and smiling to people that we wouldn't even, we couldn't stand to smell their fart on the sidewalk if they were walking by us, okay? But we have to because we're blood, right? Except for me. I feel blessed. I love my family, all of them. Well... Well, I do. <laughs> no, I was going to say, except for that one aunt, but I don't even see her. You know what I mean? But I love all my family. I do. I feel so blessed, you know? But like I said in my last couple of videos, let's normalize setting boundaries, okay? But if you are 
attempting to be sober or are sober or intentionally sober through this holiday season. God love you and some prayers to you and sound off your sobriety birthday in the comment section below or that you're trying to stay sober. I'm very proud of you. If you're not proud of yourself, I'm proud of you. Okay, let's get into these, uh, these, these rants that people have. Okay. Uh, all this cooking and cleaning, and in five minutes, everything is eaten, and it's not clean anymore. <laughs> well, let me just tell you about this, okay? I did talk about this. Years ago, when my aunt was still alive, we would literally, like, sit down. Everybody would eat. We'd say a prayer, and then everybody would sit down in 10 minutes. This was after my mom passed away, and I was dating Alex. We'd sit down in 10 minutes. Everybody would eat. They'd take all the dishes in the kitchen. Everybody go down the basement and start watching a movie or a football game or something like that. Then Caroline and my aunt and I, we would be like clean up the kitchen. And my aunt would have put on a pot of coffee and she'd say, nobody even had dessert. And they'd all be in the basement. And then Caroline would be like, does anybody want dessert? There was no games or nothing. Okay. Then when I started doing holidays with my, my uh, husband's family, <clears throat> they play games. Not just one game, but hours of games. Okay. I mean, we might show, over there, show up over there at four o'clock in the afternoon and Christmas Eve goes till four o'clock in the morning. I mean, they got karaoke machines. They got games. I mean, it's like being at a fucking amusement park. They're dancing in the kitchen. It don't even matter if there's no music. My mother-in-law, she's just like, hey, let's go. She has the life of the party. I said that in my last video. My, fa my husband's family is so much fun. And I said to my cousin Caroline, I said, fuck this shit. <laughs> Get fucked, cousin Caroline. I said, we ain't doing this stuff no more. No games, I ain't coming, okay? No party, I ain't coming. No music, I ain't coming. And she's like, I agree with you. We just rushed through this shit just to say we got together. Now at Cousin Caroline's, oh no, man, we play games. We play that you don't know Jack on the computer. We dance. My mother-in-law comes with us. We all dance. It is so fun. So we got all kinds of holidays now. You got to live it up. Listen, if you got to be with your family anyway, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Turn on that, that some of that... That music, I was going to say a specific song, but I don't know what's going to get me in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Put on some music and dance, okay? Shake your booty. Shake it like it. Listen, shake it like there ain't no tomorrow, okay? And have a blast doing it. You know what? You only got one life. Okay. But I agree with you. And I just let that shit sit out there for two weeks. Just let it sit on the table till somebody else cleans it. Then you realize ain't nobody going to clean it. I love this one so much. Somebody just said the concept of a tree in a house. What the fuck? And you know what? I am 52 years old and I had never thought about that before. <laughs> I agree with you, Cindy. What the fuck? A tree in a house? But I kind of lived. Do you watch Real Housewives of Dubai? Oh my God. They had that. Who was it? That one gal that's from England. What's her name? I can't think. I want to say Cynthia Bailey, but that's Atlanta, now LA. Now she's got a podcast. I love Cynthia Bailey so much. What's that gal's name? You know, <laughs> the one that all of her confessional... Well, Dubai got put on pause, but... What's her name? And her husband's name is Sergio. Oh, Caroline. Caroline. I love Caroline so much. But did you see that house that she and Sergio, her husband? I mean, that's Sergio. God, can you imagine if you were married to him? People want to complain about their husbands and be like, my husband doesn't bring me flowers. I don't ever get to spend any time with my husband. My husband... That's Sergio. Watch five minutes of him and Caroline together. You won't be complaining. He is on Caroline like shit on stink. I mean, he is hanging on her all the time, right? I'm like, too much, okay? Too much. But they built this gorgeous house, and they had a tree flown in. A bonsai, a huge bonsai tree. I thought bonsai trees were, like, that big. This huge bonsai tree, like, it's, like, in their atrium of their house. You know, a tree in a house. But, Cindy, I agree with you. I do think it's kind of a fucked up concept, but I live for it all day long. Anyway, okay. Um, Christmas AI Coca-Cola ad. It's, I haven't seen it. I don't watch AI. I think AI is trash and people hide behind it. But I don't watch the AI, okay? I like, I appreciate real art. And when somebody has something real to say, that's what I appreciate. Unpopular opinion. We, uh, should all be having Thanksgiving dinner in the light of a Christmas tree. <laughs> I don't really have an opinion about that. I don't know. You seem you seem to have a strong opinion. I don't know. Why should you not? Oh, you mean turn the lights off and then just... Okay, well, I think you should. I think that, yes. I think, I think a popular opinion. Uh, who? <laughs> Who's telling you you can't do that? If I said it to Caroline, Caroline would say, there's the lamp, turn the light off. I mean, I don't... I think it'd be pretty. I think that'd be real... You should do it, girl. You should do it. I think that'd be real pretty. <laughs> I think you should do it all day long. Okay. People constantly complaining instead of just enjoying family. I mean, I get this, okay? Listen, we a lot of us have toxic family members. We a lot, listen, I was telling from this the other day. When I came out at 18 years old in 1990, okay, there were so many friends of mine 
that were thrown out of their houses, kicked out of their families, their families would never see them again because they were simply gay, okay? People don't want to think that we're returning to that, but I see sentiments of that all through the world right now, okay? And some places in the world, that's never changed. So I had a lot of friends like that. And so in 1990, a term that had been around for a while, but we really started using was family of choice versus family of origin. Family of origin being the people that were born into blood family, okay? And then when I got sober in 1994, chosen family became a really huge thing to me, you know? My best friend, Tanya Jean, who's like an older sister to me, and her husband that's always been a mentor to me, you know? And her family, and other friends of mine, and sponsors of mine that we would travel together and have holidays with. I believe today, at 52 years old, that chosen family is just as important as blood family. And just because you are in the same bloodline that you can find on Ancestry.com, listen, you can find out that your uncle's a serial killer too because you're on there. That don't mean that you should love that person. And if they treated you shitty and horrible as a child or as an adult and they were toxic to your life, no, you shouldn't be forced to go sit there for Thanksgiving or Christmas or buy them a gift or receive a gift from them. And that's the power of setting boundaries and the beauty of setting boundaries today. That you can choose to spend your holidays or a Wednesday with your chosen family instead of your blood family, okay? And you don't even have to give an excuse why. You can just say, because I don't feel like it. Get fucked. <laughs> you can say that if you want. Get fucked for the holidays. But I do agree. With those of us that don't have that toxicity, I feel like it's kind of like it's just kind of like, uh, it's funny sarcasm to complain about, oh my god, I don't want to go to my family's for holidays. Well, you know, my aunt and uncle have passed. My mom has passed away. When your small family gets smaller and smaller and smaller and you get older, what you realize is those holidays I used to bitch and complain about, I really miss that. I, I wish I would have appreciated it more the times that I got to spend with those people. You know, if I could just have one more Christmas with my mom or one more holiday with my aunt and uncle, I mean, that would mean the world to me. Or my dogs. I mean, Boo Rowley just passed away. I was just thinking about this last night. I mean, this is going to be the first Christmas with no dog in this house. You know, it just seems real weird to me, you know? And so, yes, I think not just at holidays, but I think in life, we should focus more on the positive instead of the negative. But let's get back to some of those complaints and rants that y'all had. Don't you think it's more fun? See, that's what it's about. It's more fun to complain about the holidays, but I agree with you. Okay. So somebody said having to go to 20 different family members' houses because everyone's divorced. Well, this has been my entire life. And with every boyfriend that I've had before my husband, Alex. And now we still go to two places, okay? And I used to hate it, but now I've kind of embraced it. I'm just kind of like, you know what? I'm going to stay somewhere until I'm ready to move on to the next place. Um, and somebody said, when you're a vegetarian and the only thing you can eat at Christmas dinner is rolls. A girl, I feel you, okay? Although I will say, I, I joke about this, but both like Alex's family... Especially his aunt and uncle and his mom. And, um, which is basically the only people that ever host. And then, uh, and my cousin Caroline, they are really kind to always, like, ask me what I want. Like, my cousin is always like, what do you want? I'm like, the mushrooms. She puts these mushrooms in a crock pot with ranch powder and butter. And I always tell her, that's what I want. So she makes sure that I have things that I have. They, they both do. And they're very sweet about it. The other thing is, I will say this as a vegetarian, okay, that... I am always going to somebody's house and they're hosting it, which is why, like, with my cousin Caroline and other people, we try to do things like bring things or sponsor the dinner or pay for it or help clean or whatever, right? But I also think as a vegetarian, one of the things I've learned is if I want things at that dinner, it's okay for me to bring those things and make those things and also share those things with other people. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things that I try to do, too, as a vegetarian is try to, like, bring things if I want things to eat. Um... Somebody said, I love my sister, but the girl can't cook. I am tired of lying. Letting her know this co her cooking is bad this year. Girl, let it out. Let it out like a bad fart in a small room. Let it out. Say, girl, you cannot cook, and I am not eating no more of this, okay? And listen, okay? Bologna sandwiches do not make a turkey dinner. <laughs> Bologna sandwiches. My baloney has a first name. It's O S E A R. My baloney has a second name. It's M A Y E R. Somebody wrote down the lyrics for me the other day. Now I can't remember what they are. I love to eat it every day. And when I, when people ask me why, I say, cause Oscar Mayer is a is a way to B O L O G N A. But anyway, listen, listen, Linda. Jello salad and a blow job, blow job, blow job. Ah, for, a blow job for Thanksgiving? No, that's a that's a bad porno. But listen, okay, Jello salad. 
Listen, if you go to somebody's house for Thanksgiving dinner, okay, and they serve you up a bologna sandwich with Miracle Whip, Jello salad, and a Natty Light, okay, and I'm sober, and I don't eat meat, <laughs> that is not Thanksgiving, okay? You need to tell your sister to get with the times, okay? Everybody should start catering holidays, and <laughs> that's where... I know the one person out there is like, oh my God, we can't afford to... It is so expensive to cook. It's cheaper to cater it. Don't you know that? Or just roll through Kentucky Fried Chicken and get you some, get you a bucket of fried chicken. Somebody said, shitty paper plates that can't hold enough food. Girl, <laughs> double up and get two. That's what I always do. Um, I have no interest in a tree that looks like it's from a professional decorator. <laughs> I can't afford a professional decorator, so you're just going to get what you get, and you don't throw a fit like my mother-in-law says. Girl, listen, this house is lucky if it gets a tree, okay? I, I've been trying to put this shit off for so long. I want a tree up, but I don't want to do the work, and it takes five minutes to put up my little tiny Christmas tree, right? I usually do it in a video. That way it's like a twofer, you know what I mean? But I agree with you. But I do like more of the homey Christmas trees. But in here, everybody complains about it. Somebody's like, I hate white lights. Somebody's like, I hate colored lights. I like all kinds of lights. I just like Christmas. Costco be in a bloodbath. <laughs> you know my cousin? She was literally screaming at people when we were leaving the parking lot today. And it wasn't even that busy. And she's like, it's Thanksgiving. I'm like, Kenway, it's not Thanksgiving until tomorrow. She goes, I don't care. People should be nice. She was getting out of my way. I was like, girl, you are losing it. Okay, you're going to be in the nervous hospital for Thanksgiving. You won't even be worried about it. I won't get my mushrooms. So settle it down, cousin Caroline. Uh, oh, here's, wait. The same person that said they didn't want a professional decorator. She said... White lights only. People are snobs. Color lights make it feel like Christmas. Oh, she's talking white lights only. People are snobs. <laughs> My friend Nikki's going to love that because she's a white uh, lights only person. She's like, no, we do all like all white lights. She's just Candyland theme. I know. I think it's real pretty though. I do. I like that candy. I, I didn't used to like it, but I like it. But then her son wanted like all the colorful lights. And so they went out and he got a tree and he put it up in his bedroom. And then he gets out of his tree in there uh, with all the colorful lights on. And then the whole family's happy. So just get trees for everybody. Let them put whatever lights they want. You know what I used to think was so tacky when I was a little kid? And as I get older, I really like our blue lights. <sighs> I know. They're kind of so pretty, aren't they? They're kind of a throwback to the 70s. Oh, here, somebody said, red and green are the only appropriate Christmas decor. Okay. <laughs> Santa Claus. And that's not really what Christmas is about, but okay. I don't know that there was, oh, she's got all kinds of opinions. This is the same one that's talking about professional decorators and all that kind of stuff. Okay, girl. <clears throat> I do like gold, though. Silver and gold. Tell Pearl Ives. <laughs> he was singing songs about it and read off the root of, read off the, I can't root off the red-nosed reindeer. And girl, your profile picture is pretty and you are young. So that was probably put out before you were alive. So you don't know that Pearl Ives sang silver and gold. Sil oh, girl, is it AI? <laughs> you hide behind that? No. No, but I like red and, I like red and green too. But I like, I don't know. I don't love it. Like, I like kind of the natural, like wood and white with a little bit of red and all that kind of stuff. I don't love it when it's like purple and I don't like that. That I'm like, no, that's not Christmas. That don't make no sh sense to me. Uh, somebody said, I need a post office rant. It's been a while. I was in and out of the post office today. It was so quick. I was in and out of there. Um, somebody said, I have never met anyone who likes turkey. We have to stop making it. Save the turkeys. Somebody said, can we ban Christmas music until after Halloween? I mean, you don't have to listen to it. <laughs> just like my videos, you can turn them off. You don't have to watch them. <laughs> I agree, though, okay? I mean, can we just celebrate Halloween, please? You know, I love Halloween so much. Rudolph noses and ran reindeer antlers on co cars just annoy me. I think they're cute. I just in listen. Li life's too short. If somebody wants to put that stupid shit on their car, just let you know what I hate? are the balls that hang off the back of the pickup trucks, okay? It's like, you know what I want to say to those guys? I want to say, we already know. You got a, a you got a pickup truck that's bigger than a semi. We already know you got a small dick, okay? You don't have to act, you don't have to act like you got a bunch of low hangers off the back of your truck because we know you don't, okay? <laughs> that's why you're buy, that, driving that big old truck. We got you figured out, okay? I hate that shit on cars. But I do think the antlers and the nose and stuff like that's kind of cute. I do. Okay, just today, a woman kept pushing me literally with her cart. So busy out there. I just online shop. <laughs> I do. Poorly made tamales. Girl, I agree with you all day long. Okay, that is end of the holiday season. Aunt, oh, Aunt Carol. <laughs> Who's Aunt Carol? Hey, Aunt Carol. Aunt Carol's nasty casserole. No one eats. And then, does it have those Chinese noodles on it? I hate those, don't you? And you know what I hate even more? Is the butterscotch 
cookies made out of the Chinese noodles. That is our progress with Jello salad. An egg does not belong in macaroni and cheese, okay? And basically, <laughs> welcome to the mom side of the family that I don't go to them family reunions anymore because it's Jello salad and that kind of gag a can't stand it. Anyway, I got so many more of these. If you guys want me to do a follow-up to this, a third part, I will. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.